In this video we're going to look at a common problem with floating elements in CSS and that is if we were to float an element left or an element right in this case I've got two elements one left one right that's the two black boxes that you can see um, on either side of the page um, and we have this gray container in the background so if we just inspect this take a look we've got this container which has the light gray background and we've got a box that's floated left and a box that's floated right and we actually have a clear fix class on here which is actually preventing this um, container from collapsing up to itself so um, basically what it's doing is it is clearing any floats in a cross browser friendly way so we don't see this issue with it with it collapsing and you'll see now that what will happen is if I get rid of this clear fix uh, class this actually collapses the container is still there it's just collapsed um, and if we were to go ahead and get rid of box right and let's say with box left uh, remove the float on this you can see that the container comes back so if you've ever faced this problem with floating elements and not being able to keep control of containers, we'll go ahead and look at implementing a reusable cross-browser friendly way, quite a short way of clearing, uh, uh, clearing floats uh, within containers. Okay, so I'm over to my text editor. We're going to go ahead and write this markup from the start just to help us understand how uh, the floating within this works and how the clear fix is going to remedy, remedy this. Um, I've also attached a global.css style sheet, which there's nothing in at the moment. We're doing everything here from scratch, but the basic document markup is here. So the first thing I'm going to do is create this gray container and we'll see what this looks like. So go ahead and create this container. So the class here, I'm just going to give container. And within here, I'll just type in test, for example. So this now has a container around it. And we're going to go ahead and style this with a light gray background. So inside of global.css, let's go ahead and target this container class. And we'll go ahead and give this a background of hash CCC. And what this is going to do is basically just give that a background. So let's go ahead and create these two elements here and these are going to be box elements so we're going to these are going to share a class and the box element is going to be a width of 100 pixels a height of 100 pixels and we're going to have a darker background here so 222 for example so this is now going to look like this so we have these two boxes that are underneath each other now what we want to do is we want one floated to the left, which sort of this one is by default, but we want this one here floated to the right. And we'll see that by doing this, as we saw in the uh, introduction, we're going to get a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a generic float left class, if you like. So this is going to float this element left. And if we just copy and paste this down, change this to right and change the float to right. So we can now apply this left and right class to any element and that will float it left or float it right. So in this case, I'm going to float the first box left and I'm going to float the last box right. Now what we see is the gray background disappear. And this is quite confusing for a lot of people. And understandably, it's confusing because, you know, we wonder where the where the container's gone. So basically what we need to do is we need to implement this clear fix class which we can apply to our container. What this will do is it will say after this element clear all floats. So it will actually just tidy everything up and the container will naturally fit to the elements within it that are floated. So let's go ahead and actually build this clear fix class and we'll go ahead and uh, take a look at why we're doing each thing. Uh, it's very hacky, but it you know provides a solution to reuse this wherever we need to clear floats. So I'm going to go ahead and create a clear fix um, class here. But what I'm actually going to do is rather than just have a clear fix class, I'm going to use pseudo elements to go ahead and say I want this to apply for before this element and after this element as well. So we go ahead and get rid of this and after. The first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and add a content property. And this is just going to be a space. And this just basically allows uh, this to work in Opera. And what we're then going to do is go ahead and display block. 
So what this is doing is, uh, if we go ahead and apply, apply it to this element, we'll take a look in the element inspector. So nothing has changed yet, that's absolutely fine, but we can now see that we've got the pseudo element before and after. Now what this is going to do is just going to allow us to go ahead and now provide the after on its own. And what we're going to now do is use the clear property, which you may have come across before, and clear both is going to go ahead and clear left and right floats. The options for this are clear left, clear right, or clear both. So we're going to go ahead and clear both. And this will clear all floats. Now this will work if we go ahead and uh, refresh. That then clears because what happens is this is being applied after. If we click on after just here, you can now see that we've got content uh, with a space for the opera hack, display block, and then we've got um, the actual clear both here. If this was say clear right, it wouldn't. It, well, it would work because we've got a, a, a right floating element there, and with left it will as well. But we want to clear both. So as as with the last thing, we've got the before element here as well. So we can actually select these in the uh, element inspector. So now that we've got that, there's uh, a, one last thing to do, which is um, regarding the IE um, has uh, has layout property. And this is part of the Internet Explorer rendering engine. And what we basically need to do is um, with this, we need to trigger the has layout um, in Internet Explorer. And this this is for Internet Explorer 6 and 7. Um, and this is quite a, well, it's a very hacky rule. But basically what this means is, is that this, you know, clear fix will work for us in Internet Explorer 6 and Internet Explorer 7. So what we want to go ahead and do is say clear fix as we've done before and we don't use after or before here because it's not supported what we do is we say asterisk zoom and one so this is now going to allow this to work in i6 and 7 so it works perfectly for a modern browser like chrome and uh, other browsers as well including opera but we've also uh, provided support for 6 and 7 so wherever you need to use this clear fix element, whatever container you're creating, we could create another one down here. All we're really doing is we're adding an additional um, class in here to actually clear fix this. And you can go ahead and call this whatever you want. There is a bit of a debate about should this be called clear fix or should it have a shorter name? So CF or clear or you know anything else there's there's a variety of different opinions or preferences rather on what this should be called but basically that's how we clear fix in css